My name is Olivier Aubert. I come from the University of Nantes, or Nantes if you prefer, in France. And so France being much closer from Germany than from the US, thanks a lot to our hypothesis for organizing this event here in Europe. It's really cool. Uh, COCO is actually the small name for the full name of the project, which is Coming Open Courseware. Coming is, comes from the name of one of our, our, our the founding institutions, which is Coming Labs. And open courseware is because one of the aims of the project beyond, beyond uh, leveraging video, video notations in pedagogical and research videos is to promote open courseware and open source licenses, open licenses among the teacher and researcher community in our uh, university. And our website is uh, uh, cited here. Why did we want to work on video annotations? Because we had previous experience in this domain with an, a project which is called Advin, Advin project. Started some time ago before the video was already an object on the web. So it's a desktop application that allows you to, on one side, uh, annotate videos uh, and process them until the end is to create hyper videos, at the end of the process or the annotation process. So this still exists, but we decided to make a project with a different target, uh, this COCO project. Uh, the target is first to annotate pedagogical and research videos so that researchers and teachers in our institution eat their own dog food because they can make things out of their research and they also can apply it in their uh, in the lectures. Uh, there was a name to remain accessible and simple to use because the previous application was used by experts, sociologists, movie critics, and so on. It was rather complex. I wanted to see if we could uh, enhance this or simplify the application so that it could be used by students or even uh, less involved teachers. And we also wanted to experiment with new pedagogical practices. We not just wanted to provide a tool but we wanted to accompany the process of seeing how we can use it. So at the beginning of the project, we defined different scenarios. Uh, the first one was the most basic one. It's how to enrich seminar on lectures, recordings, video recordings with additional metadata in the form of annotations. So video annotations are data associated to a video fragment and an integral uh, annotation for uh, scholarly videos is slides because most of the of the lectures are supported by slides which provide a good content and good anchor points for annotation so this gives us a first a good uh, starting point for annotating these videos and then allowing people to take personal notes so that they can bookmark specific points in the video so this is the first uh, starting point. Then another scenario was to use these features in a flipped classroom scenario where the students can at home watch the video through the interface and take notes. And these notes can be exploited by the teacher while in the classroom. Uh, another one was to leverage annotations, video annotations in, MOOC, in MOOCs. So some MOOCs feature much uh, video context, contents and uh, annotations can help in this regard. And the last one is a bit complex, and this is what I will be talking about uh, after, is how to use annot video annotations to annotate a live event, like a, a seminar or a, uh, an existing course that you're attending live, and then reuse these annotations you've taken live to create a new form of this uh, course in the form of a pedagogical scenario that will be built from the annotations. So for this, we had to have a starting point is to use live annotations. Like today, the event is recorded and people are tweeting. So everything has a common time code somewhere. So in tweets, there are time codes. We can arrange to get, uh, it, it may be difficult, but we may get some time codes or absolute time codes also for the video recordings. So it's easy thereafter to resynchronize it's easy. It's, uh, it's possible to resynchronize the annotations, the live notes with the, um, the recording. So we first developed a tool uh, which is called Coco Notes Live uh, to be able to 
Uh, we could have used Twitter for this. Some people experimented with using Twitter, but as we saw in previous interventions, like the Open Education Roundtable this, uh, this afternoon, uh, people may be not comfortable in an educational context uh, to use public expression. So we wanted to have a private tool that allowed to, to define private groups. So we re-implemented basically a live uh, microblogging tools where we call we so which allows to define private groups, so for each class or each event, uh, for instance. Uh, we took the opportunity to, to, to do some research around the predefinition of categories or hashtags to, to see how, wh what we can do with it. And so the first slide usage is to be like a tweet wall. It, it can be used uh, during the, the lecture, the course, as a back channel for the audience or even to get questions from a, an, an audience that can be both local or remote. And after the event, we resynchronize these annotations with the video recording, with the slides, and we get enriched video content. Uh, you can see the slides on the left of the video. On the right, you've got a text annotation that were taken. Below the video, you can see a graphical timeline, which also provides interesting information about the, the event structure, in fact. And uh, our fin final goal was to build, uh, to create a pedagogical scenario. So we tried to use media thread from uh, Columbia University, which we found nice, but the users of our experiment did not find as nice as us. So it was not uh, quite a success. Just a final word about the interfaces uh, I showed. There were prototypes from the first stages of our project. Now we're re-implementing, we have re-implemented our platform, which, uh, for which we involved the designer to, to help us on this graphic design. And uh, it has almost the same features, so you can annotate videos, you can share your annotations between small groups that you define, you can put quizzes inside videos, such things exist already on the web, but not that many open source. And we provide also analytics and dashboards and this is an open source uh, software uh, based on Django frameworks. We have a data model that we had from previous projects that's called CineLab and that we will adapt, we'll build the bridge with the web annotation data model. It's uh, almost, uh, on, yeah, it's well thought out already. And we use the metadata player, which is uh, an HTML5 front end for video annotation developed in conjunction with a partner in Paris in Centre Pompidou. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. Questions for Oliver? Yep. Uh, Oliver, that's fantastic. It's really interesting the work that you've been doing. I was wondering, when you mentioned around the live annotation stuff and the, and the live broadcast stuff, have you had any issues with the, the buffering delay that would go through on a live video? Yes, the there is a small delay and we had to accommodate it. Uh, the annotations that came from the local audience because we used it in a context where there was a, a talk with local people attending it and also remote people. It was streamed on the web. And so when resynchronizing annotations, we had to accommodate for the delay, take into account the delay for the remote people, yes. 